There's a lot of design trade-offs to be considered when designing a stack-up. Probably the most common that comes into play is cost, but also signal integrity, power integrity, and EMI uh, should come into play. So in a blank design here in hyperlinks, we see our default stack-up, which is six layers. It's a pretty popular six-layer stack-up. But if you're at all concerned about power integrity, you'll want at least one closely spaced power ground pair. So to add that in, I can right click here and I'll just keep inserting most suitable, which is a very nice feature that allows you to add the appropriate layers to your stack up pretty quick. And here I got two more metal layers now. I'm gonna make these plain layers. And now I still have four routing layers like I did in the six layer stack up, but also a power ground plane pair in the uh, middle of the board. So we're going to make this outer one a ground. We're going to make this one the VCC, and then we'll have a couple other grounds here. So now we have a bunch of solid ground planes, which would be good for routing against, and then also a, a VCC and I'm going to reduce the spacing between the VCC and ground to something like three mils. So that's going to help for things like power integrity by providing embedded capacitance and uh, low loop inductance to connect the capacitors to. So if we look, if we turn on draw proportionally here, we can kind of see how all our layers are sitting. And we pretty much have equal dielectric heights uh, everywhere uh, in the stack up there. So uh, by default, they're all 10, so I'm going to reduce these to something more reasonable, like uh, 5. And uh, we'll leave that one at 10. We'll leave this one at 5, and set that one to 5. Okay, so now all of my routing layers are closely coupled to those outer ground planes. Uh, which is good if you're going to break up that VCC plane uh, into different islands. You don't want to cross any splits or anything like that. It's good to have that extra spacing in there. And since my total thickness is only 52 mils, I'll add the extra thickness I need to reach my total board thickness uh, against those uh, internal power ground plane pair just to keep... Uh, just to keep this signal away from the, the VCC plane, which will probably be broken up. And uh, also, of course, keeping the, the stack up symmetrical from top to bottom. So if we look at what a test width of, of six mils uh, would produce here, uh, on our outer layers, a six mil trace will produce a 60 ohm impedance. And then on our inner signal layers, it'll produce 49.1, so almost 50 ohms. So this looks like a, a pretty good starting point for our design. And uh, if, if we wanted to reach maybe a, a, an outer layer impedance of 60 ohms, uh, this would work well, and 50 ohms for the, the inner layer. Uh, let's see if I reduce that trace width down to four. It looks like with my existing stack up on the inner layers, I can get up to 58.2 ohms, so almost 60 ohms. Uh, if I wanted to route some, some 60 ohm stuff on the inner layer, I might consider uh, increasing that, that thickness of, of that uh, uh, dielectric to uh, something a little bigger to get all the way up to 60 ohms if I didn't want to trace with less than four mils. But if we're only going to route 50 ohm stuff on the inner layer, then that's good. Uh, if I go over to my impedance planning tab and type in those targets over there, 60 and 50, then you can see 6 mil trace. Um, oh, yeah. So for a 6 mil trace, 49 ohms was the 6 mil trace. If I wanted 50 ohms, it would be something more like 5.75 mils. Um, so that's for single-ended. If I wanted to look at a differential pair, I would type in something more reasonable for a differential pair, say 100 ohms. 
And so on the outer layer, I could route 100 ohm trace with a 6 mil width and 5.3 mil spacing. That seems pretty reasonable. On the inner layers, I'm getting an error. And uh, if we look at the hint here, error means the impedance is physically impossible. So if I have 6 mil traces, there's no way for me to hit 100 ohms uh, because the single ended impedance was 49. So even if you space them infinitely apart, you never hit 100 ohms. So let's look at what we'd get with a 4 mil trace. And there, with a 4 mil trace, we could space them 6.5 mils apart. And that's pretty good from a, a coupling standpoint and a, and a routing density standpoint. Uh, one thing to consider, though, with differential pairs is loss. So if we go over to the metal tab and we type in that 4 mils on the inner layer there and we take a look at the loss curve, uh, we can see if, say, we're targeting uh, a gigahertz, uh, that we're getting uh, a little over 8 dBs per meter of loss uh, on that uh, on that 4 mil trace, which may be too high for your design. So, so if we go back to our impedance planning tab uh, and try and shoot for that, that 6 mil trace width, again, we, we get an error. So let's try increasing this dielectric height to something more like 10. Um, and then uh, to keep our total board thickness the same, we'd have to reduce that one to 10. And then to be symmetrical, these two would also have to be 10. All right, so back to our, our 10 mil dielectric height. There, uh, we could get an 8.2 mil spacing. So that's pretty good. Um, one thing here that's handy is using the solve for both. So we're at 100 ohms. If we view the impedance curve, we can kind of see, OK, well, there's our, our 6 mil, 8 mil spacing right there on the curve. Uh, we could probably even go to 7 mils, which would give us less loss and still maintain pretty good coupling. If we went all the way up to 8 mils, those traces are getting pretty far apart uh, at 20 mils. So uh, looking at the, this impedance curve allows you to find that sweet spot of where you can can maximize loss or minimize loss uh, maximizing your your trace width and still maintain uh, good routing density and and good coupling between the traces so i'm going to go ahead and go back to solve for separation and say okay well we're going to use a seven mil trace and there we have an 11.4 mil separation and then if we go back to the metal tab and type in that seven mils instead of the four that's going to reduce our attenuation at a gigahertz tier to oh we're less than seven so we're at 6.8 whereas before we were above eight with the four mil trace so that is a very nice way to to figure out okay what do i need to do to achieve the correct differential impedance with a reasonable amount of loss that's also going to play well with my single ended traces. So if we go back to the single trace and go back to uh, what a 50 ohm impedance would be, oh, not 60, 50, uh, I would have basically an 8.36 or 8.4 mil trace uh, to hit that 50 ohms on the inner layers. Uh, unfortunately, one side effect of this is that our signal trace is now spaced the same distance from the ground plane as it is the VCC plane. And as we mentioned before, we wanted more distance from that VCC plane uh, in case we need to cross over any splits or, or something like that, that that might cause a radiation issue or an EMI issue. So, um, you know, there's always trade-offs to be made. We could say, okay, well, maybe we can use an 82 mil thick board instead of a 62 mil thick board. So that'll change these distances on the far side of, of the dielectric there to 20 mils instead. So now again, we're more closely coupled uh, to those outer ground planes, which will likely be solid planes. 
Uh, so that's good. And then the other nice uh, thing uh, as a result of that is that we could do uh, maybe a higher impedance trace. So if we wanted to do maybe a 75 ohm trace for something like video, uh, that would be achievable with four mil traces on the stack up. So we basically created a stack up that allows for good power integrity uh, as well as good uh, emissions uh, performance and giving us all the right impedances we need for all our different signals.